Greetings and welcome back to 303. We are still working with Faulkner's Rose for Emily. Let's pause for a moment now and study just for a few minutes a video presentation of Rose for Emily that, uh, that we have. Um, you're going to see a little movie. Uh, uh, jot this down in your notes. Two things. We're working obviously at level 3A relationship to other texts, right? We've read this story. Now we want to take a look at a visual presentation of the story. And we're going to ask a couple of things. One, how do you see the film different from the text you read? Okay, you're going to see some differences, so we want to pay attention to that. Uh, number two, we want to pay attention in our film version to the ways in which music and lighting play a powerful role in setting up the pivotal end of the story, all right? So well, let's go ahead and pay attention. You're going to have some introductory comments at the beginning, take some notes, and then just watch the film, all right? Here we go. The most transforming and enduring of the human emotions is perhaps love. At least we hope that it is. In the short story, A Rose for Emily, author William Faulkner recreates the turn of the century small town world of Miss Emily Grierson, who for the past 40 years has lived in the shadow of love lost. This 1981 film adaptation of the story brings its gothic mood and atmosphere to life on the screen. The ghostly frosted rose on Emily's front door is a harbinger of things to come. There are dark interiors within, signs of decay of both house and woman, and chilling music. In one of her first major roles, Academy Award winning actress Angelica Houston portrays an Emily who is both innocent That's my father. and evil, yearning, yet resigned, touched by madness, but possessed of a certain dignity. Let us now follow Emily from youth into old age. And as you watch, note how the sequence of events in the film is different from Faulkner's story. And observe the film's gothic imagery. How do the filmmakers convey an atmosphere of strangeness, decay, and death, and also romance? And now, a rose for Emily. in one of the downstairs rooms, her head propped up on a pillow, yellow and moldy with age and lack of sunlight. She fell ill and died, an indomitable and weary southern woman of 74.
Cover me with her feet, please. Miss Emily Grierson was a legend in our town. A disgraced and fallen monument who, people said, lived too much in the past with too many secrets. I need to be real still now. Alive? We believe the Griersons held themselves a little too high for what they really were. None of the young men were quite good enough for Miss Emily. That'll be just fine. Till we get the jug. Oh, good. Colonel, we got business to do. Before we get too old, talking it over. <laughs> Mr. Grinson, I, I thought perhaps Miss Emily would, if there's a dance next Saturday. She won't attend any dances. Rid up and stop right outside this house. And fine, fine. Forward! He put up their hands higher than me. Dead, Daddy. Hit it on fire! Watch out, everyone! Watch out now! Make a sound! Come on! Get it! Get it! Get it! Get it! The actress! Emily! Emily, run! Hide the silver! Emily! Hide the silver! The actress! The actress! The actress! The actress! The actress! Emily, help myself. Miss Emily, will she feel more safe tomorrow? Emily, help me with my sister. Her Aunt Wyatt went completely crazy at the last and passed on soon after. You have plenty of chance to get in the wet dress. I don't want any more of your moves. Already we're trouble enough. Don't need it for you. died, it got out that the house was all that was left of, and in a way, people were glad. Now, like the rest of us, she too would know the old thrill and the old despair of a penny more or less. in the family. We did not say she was crazy then. Being left alone and a pauper too. And what with all the young men her father had driven away, we knew she would have to cling to that which robbed her, as people will.
noise were blowing up stumps for the new sidewalk. Looks like you're doing a little barbering. My name is Baron. Homer Baron. I'm the foreman. Kristen. Emily Kristen. I gotta get back. They get lazy without me. Here's your razor. upon as if they were wild beasts with only a temporary resemblance to civilized human beings. Everybody loved the gossip. It was lively romance, like public accounts of arson and murder, even when we believed that she was poor. It was as though she demanded more than ever the recognition of her dignity as the last place. toilet set in silver with his initials in each piece and that she bought a complete outfit of man's clothing including a nightshirt monogrammed with the initials HB in script. We thought Homer Barron a willing and unfailingly good-natured sort. 
even if an unreliable Yankee, we were sure that they were to be married. No, I shouldn't miss that buggy ride. If we had one of our own, I... Let's see if we can't get ourselves one. Homer Baron finished laying the sidewalks and deserted. There was talk that she would kill herself. Some said it would be the best thing. Miss Emily had become a tragic focal point, now hopelessly and disastrously compromised. My word, what is that smell? Oh, Toby! As if a man, any man, could keep a kitchen properly. Them so high and mighty. Well, we'll see the Colonel that there ought to be a law. I'd be the last person in the world to hurt Miss Emily, but we really got to do something, Colonel. Oh, it's probably just a writer, a sneak, that Toby's killed in the yard. Well, hell, that's simple enough. Tell her to have it cleaned up and give her a certain amount of time, and if she don't... Damn it, sir. Would you accuse a lady to her face of smelling bad? Miss Emily's house now possessed the town with a fascinated distaste as the men slunk about like burglars with sacks of lime to defeat the oh, odor and the rumors. No, hot slime. We'll spread that lime real good and get it all in the corner. about the smell it was just another link between the gross teeming world and the high and mighty Grierson's. After a week or two the smell went away. Her last champion Colonel Sartoris died soon after isolating her even more. For a while she gave China painting lessons to the daughters and granddaughters of the Colonel's contemporaries. But soon, even they ceased coming to her house. On occasion, we heard music. 
music and saw shadowy shapes parading past the windows, looking or not looking at us, we never could tell which. It became a gloomy house, once one of our best, now a ghost of unnamed and disastrous tragedies. Meanwhile, her taxes were never collected. generation to generation, dear, inescapable, impervious, tranquil, and perverse. came at once and held her funeral on the second day. They buried her in the old city cemetery, even then abandoned, among the rows of both Union and Confederate.